Maddie, we're interviewing him. Do um, you know where UBC's compost goes? Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Do you know where your compost and recycling and garbage goes? No. No. I have no idea. <laughs> no. No, I, I'm not sure. No clue. No, no. clue. No idea. Mm. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Hello, my name is Daryl and I want to find out what happens to waste when we throw it away and how that affects us. As many of us know, I'm standing at UBC on the ancestral and traditional land of the Musqueam people. This land is unceded, which means that it was never legally given to the Canadian government or surrendered, which makes us all guests on this land. So as we move forward and find out what happens to our waste, let's all remember that it is often Indigenous people who are most heavily affected by environmental degradation and pollution. Yeah, I work in the Sustainability and Engineering Unit, which is part of Campus Community Planning at UBC and I work on zero waste and um, water conservation and also climate action planning. I'm currently working as a zero waste researcher at SIRS uh, and I'm also the co-founder of MELP Collective and the UBC Waste Knots engineering design team. Um, how much of our waste is actually stays in the local area and what happens to it? So really it's the food scraps um, which get composted here on campus that stay in the immediate vicinity and that's partly because we have a facility uh, that processes that food waste into compost and then the compost gets used on campus. So we have kind of a closed loop system here for that. And that's a pretty big chunk of our waste. That's about, uh, about a third of the operational day-to-day -day waste uh, on campus. And then the remainder of the stuff goes off to various other sites for recycling. Each bin goes in a lot of different directions. Paper goes to South Vancouver and gets turned into paper towel. A lot of it gets shipped to Washington, especially cardboard. In regards to recyclable containers, they get shipped anywhere from Vancouver to China, and it's really hard to know where each bottle is going to go and if any of this stuff is even going to get recycled because a lot of it um, won't be accepted because facilities won't be making money off of it. The garbage gets shipped to a landfill in Delta and unfortunately lots of compost, lots of recyclable containers and lots of paper will also end up going there because people are sorting it incorrectly and the bins will be so contaminated with other things and we just don't have the manpower to be sorting everything out. So the worst contaminants in the compost that we see are food waste with packaging followed right after that with a plastic container and cup so coffee cups are something that we see a lot of plastic bags are also really harmful and then plastic cutlery um, at the end there's coated paper wrap we also see a lot of like milk cartons and none of those things are good at all if there's a lot of contamination mixed into a to a bin of, comp of uh, food scraps then generally they're gonna have to reject that and that means it may have to go to the landfill, which is really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Separate your food from the plastic container that it's in and um, don't ever put any plastic bags, even if they say they're compostable, into the food scraps bin. So there are kind of two options for plastic. It can either end up in a landfill or it can end up in the ocean. In both cases, it's gonna start breaking down into smaller and smaller pieces and eventually microplastics. In the landfill, it'll produce something called leachate and will can eventually leach into the ground and get into groundwater systems. In the ocean, our plastic will most likely join something called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is this giant swirling soup of microplastics that it gets eaten by marine life and that eventually enters our food chain which is really unfortunate. Pizza boxes are also something that are tricky a lot of students don't understand so the best thing that we can do for pizza boxes is to rip it in half and we get the clean top part and that goes in the paper the blue bin as cardboard and the bottom part that is soiled and greasy that needs to get ripped up into at least four pieces if not more and that needs to go in the compost and it's really really helpful if people have the time and the ability to scrape as much food out as possible or even be rinsing out their containers because if something is too dirty then a lot of time the facility will just have to throw it away because they just don't have the time or the energy to clean each container out. If you're unsure about something and you care um, about where it goes you can check the sorted out guide um, the A to Z recycling guide on the UBC's website. Um, the other thing that you could do is um, put all plastic in the containers bin, um, put soft plastics and films in the garbage generally. The best option before recycling is to avoid the waste in the first place. And 
most of those items you're talking about are single use items, so not really the most efficient use of resources. So I would love to see a transition to reusable materials. And as a student, we need to look at um, this, these systematic waste sources and challenge them and say, like, you know, why do we have um, those pastry bags that are paper on, on one side and have a plastic window. Why do we have those? Why do we need those? We don't, right? So the most important thing to take away from this video is that all the waste that you have ever created is having some sort of effect on the environment that most likely is not positive. All the plastic that you've ever used, we're talking straws, cutlery, plastic water bottles, coffee cups and their lids, that still exists today. It's just really important to be aware of that and to be aware of the really, really easy changes that you can all make. The best thing that we can do is to refuse all these things, refuse single-use plastics, refuse food that is wrapped in unnecessary packaging. Obviously, after that, we can try our best to reduce things. Definitely the first R that we should all be remembering is to just refuse all the unnecessary things.